across with it. Well, I don't stand in the middle. Yeah, to go down here for a sec? Yep. Good? Okay. Let's put that one between that and the machine. Go across the... Okay, go across in front of it, but don't put it down. Oh, don't walk in there. Oh. Shit. Don't... Oh. Don't walk in the puddles. Is your thing full of water? Believe it or not, no. Oh, oh fuck you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm know sorry. why you walked there. I'm sorry. You'll learn. I thought I was going to be able to get some grip and... You gotta... No. Almost okay. like oh, right here. You. Ready? If you pass it to me... Oh. Oh, don't go in the puddle. Just throw it in front of me. You right fucking. Right in there? Yep. Gotta go that way. I'm sorry. Oh shit. <laughs> oh fuck. Ready? Okay. Ooh. <laughs> so funny. Hilarious. Oh fuck. This one looks small. Oh. Same thing. This one will go in front this time. Hold on, hold on. Don't move it. I can give you a copy actually it's gonna be online too. So okay. yeah.
right at the mouth of the driveway we're going to get it ready for the fabric so we got to kind of square it up and then pull it towards the get nice and flat for the fabric at the mouth of the driveway so uh you done up here okay good i'll see you at the bottom then Going back to the roots of uh, road building, as you say, uh, because this was all soggy, wet peat moss. And so this is called corduroy, like the corduroy pants. We lay in logs underneath, and then we're gonna put in uh, our fabric, and then we're gonna put our materials on top of the fabric, and that'll tighten everything up. As you can see, the machine that's 6,500 pounds, pretty big machine. Well, medium size. So we're gonna install our uh, landscape fabric and a culvert. This should settle a little bit, but as long as we keep adding our material on top, it'll tighten up as we uh, add more weight on it. Oh, it's a little windy. It happens to be windy when we put this stuff down. It's never like calm, really dry weather. It is every other day until we go to pull this out. Right. Keep going. No, well, I fell in the mud, hold on. You did, you fell. <laughs> I turned to laugh. I didn't, I didn't, nobody saw that. I didn't see you.
Okay, so this is the RT60. Now, what Alex is doing, he's obviously trying to get through, but I rather that machine, you see, it's got the alloy wheels on the front and the back. And the problem that you're gonna have doing this method right here is that if you go through the pile, the chunks of uh, granite, the big pieces, get pinched in between the track and the front bogey wheel and the rear bogey wheel. And if it was this, the stock rubber wheels on the front and back, like this machine, the RT65 that I'm driving, if the uh, material gets jammed in between the wheel and the track, it'll actually chunk the rubber wheel and it'll deteriorate really quick. See right there how it picked up the uh, B? Well, that's what damages the wheels. So that's why I'm having him go through the pile because you can't damage the alloy wheels with the uh, B type two. here this is basically part of the bogey wheel uh, I believe this is off of uh, probably the other machine but I'm not 100% sure I was looking at the bogey wheels on the RT65 and they're already getting shredded that's the last set and the, uh, the front sets holding up pretty good but as you can see that technique we drive up and down backwards instead of turning around because turning around is what causes this and driving through piles of uh, gravel. So uh, just some of the neat, neat things about the inside of the RT65. You got yourself a cup holder for your coffee. You got your phone holder. It's even uh, enlarged for the bigger phones in the future. And then uh, the great thing about the visibility from the sides, you can see right down, you got all your controls here, nice and handy. You've got your throttle down here. Got your backup camera. Just, while the guys are sweating outside, you're in here with the AC. All nice and cool and they're out there with the bug nets 